Andrew, now you and I have spoken quite a lot over the last year or so. You're a very familiar face within Pharma on Twitter. But for those that don't know you, can you just clarify what your current focus is and what your background is? I'm in my third career effectively, Paul. I spent 10 years in higher education, academia, uh, then a further 10 years in scholarly publishing. And since 2008, I've been exploring the interstices of the health conversation with patients, healthcare professionals, but probably I'm mostly associated with the pharma industry. And you're someone that I very quickly saw as being very visible on Twitter and somebody worth following. But how did you start out using Twitter? I was initially drawn to Twitter thanks to Chris Brogan, who I'm sure anyone in the social or uses the social web has heard of, uh, who invited me in his blog post, Grow Bigger Ears, to create a set of listening posts. And it seemed to me that Twitter was a great, great place to start. So I created a Twitter account, I think in November 2008, and 25,000 or so tweets later, I'm still going. Twitter is where the conversation is. Now Celia Chouquet, who we interviewed earlier this year and yourself, were instrumental in founding the Healthcare Social Media Europe Twitter chat. What's the intention of this? How does it operate and where do you really see it going? Celia and I discovered each other online in August 2009. I think we were both looking for the same thing. We were looking for a health conversation around social media with a pan-European perspective. And whilst we found each other, we didn't actually discover that conversation taking place. So it was an easy next step to try to discover a vehicle that could f facilitate that, that, that could make it happen. And because we met on Twitter, we felt that Twitter was probably the logical place to start. So we created Healthcare Social Media Europe with the hashtag HCSMEU. We convene every Friday at noon uh, UK time, one o'clock Central European time. And we discuss three questions of 20 minutes duration, all of which are provided by the participants. And we now have a community, an active community of approaching a thousand members. Uh, with a tweet reach of about 30,000. And something I always like to ask people is, what do you define as social media, particularly in the context of pharma? Social media, in essence, is anything that facilitates dialogue, that facilitates two-way discussion, rather than those modes of communication which are attuned to pronouncement and simply making announcements. Um, what that means from the ph from farmer's perspective is not an easy question to answer, but I would hope that it would be perceived by the industry as a means of allowing them not only to connect in an effective way with the communities of interest that it wishes to engage with, but also to express messages about itself in the way that it wishes them to be perceived and received. That's, that's different from saying that the industry can somehow control the message, but it does mean that it has numerous opportunities, or as many opportunities as it affords itself, to present its message in the way that it wants to. Where do you see social media use heading within Pharma in terms of channels, objectives, the kind of audiences it's engaging with? I think the industry needs to maintain uh, the core corporate presences, because that's probably where people go to first. But I, I would anticipate that we will see a fragmentation of social media presences across the industry, speaking to different needs in different geographies and often in different languages. And we're already seeing companies like Pfizer beginning to roll out uh, different accounts in different geographies using different uh, local language, I think to, to great effect and to great success, and I wish them well in that enterprise because I think it's important. Social media is not just about the numbers. In fact, arguably you could say it's not about the numbers at all. It's about the value of connections, not the quantity of connections. And those metrics which measure influence, such as clout and peer index, aren't just looking at, for example, the number of followers you have. They're looking at the degree of engagement, the number of retweets, the number of connections and communications that are being made between your account and, the com and those who follow you and those who are in your community. So what companies do you think actually get it when it comes to social media use within Pharma? What are they doing that makes you think that? Well, I think Boehringer is, is a leading light on Facebook. They've had comments open pretty much since day one. The world hasn't spun off its axis. Boehringer is, uh, I think, really leading the way in that regard. 
I admire any uh, pharma company that, that uses Twitter effectively, in other words, not just as a platform for relentless push messaging, but to genuinely engage. And I, I could point to any number of examples in that regard, I think, but I like what Sanofi US is doing. They're a fresh new account that's been around since January of this year, and they've really made it their aim from day one straight out of the gate to make conversation and connection the heart of their account. I'm uh, an admirer of Johnson & Johnson's YouTube page. I think they're doing great work. Simply in terms of the quantity and quality of content that they produce and the conversation through comments which that generates. Uh, you wouldn't think that YouTube comments were a natural forum for conversations to take place because you can't embed them, you can't thread them, but that doesn't matter. People still talk about uh, the, the videos which J&J put up there. I'm uh, an admirer of what Roche have done across the board. It would be unfair necessarily to pick on any one of their properties, but I think the Roche underscore com Twitter account is very effective. I really liked Congress uh, Conference Connect, the, the, the recent account that they launched to bring together um, attendees at professional congresses. And in the blogosphere, relatively small sample there, but I think AZ Health Connections are doing a, a terrific job in just trying to reorient pharma blogs slightly away from the core community of uh, journalists and investors that they've aimed at in the past and regulators, and beginning to reach out to patients through the, these channels as well. And of course, conversely, what are the most common mistakes you see being made by both pharma companies and broader healthcare organisations when it comes to social media use? Clearly, the, the, the major mistake is, is electing not to participate. Nothing can come of that. And you can neither build a presence uh, nor advance your aims unless you get in there, roll your sleeves up and get involved. And it seems strange to me, particularly from pharma's perspective, you know, this is an industry that, that is built upon the scientific method, it's built upon ex experiment and to that end it should de be defining itself by its failures uh, because only through failure can we find what works. And I feel that there's a, an aversion to failure within the industry, an aversion to be associated with things that don't work. And uh, again, I would say that that's antithetical to what the scientists on farmers' payroll are doing in their labs. They experiment and fail every day, and that's what pharma marketers need to do within the social web. And finally, Andrew, social media can appear very frightening, very unfathomable to those who aren't involved in it already. So for somebody looking to start out and get involved, what advice would you give them? Well, five years in after the launch of Twitter, we're in the lucky position where actually there is a great deal of very good information already out there and available for free. Uh, we can look at sites like Mashable, sites like TechCrunch, sites like Read Write Web, and they all have uh, user guides or a variation on that theme on how to get going in Twitter, how you can present yourself and protect yourself on Facebook, for example. So Google is your friend, really, I think, when, uh, when you begin your adventure on the social web now. Have a, a browser window open and use a natural language search, search term. For example, what does MT mean on Twitter will take you to a blog post which uh, well, I wrote, let's be honest. Uh, so th th there's plenty of examples out there of, of help that you can get. Andrew, it's been a pleasure as always speaking with you. Thank you very much for your time. Paul, thank you for the invitation to talk to you today. It's been a pleasure. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.